time to go for gold. And two massive Asian nations taking each other on for the top spot here in the compound mixed team competition. It's Korea versus India for gold. On target number one, representing the Republic of Korea. Oh, you hear? Kim Jong Ho. On target number two, representing India. Ah, how about we? Indo Day. Giardi Suraka Vietnam. Ojas Pravin Deotale. The line judge for this matchup is. Shannon Russell Dyke. So time for the gold medal match in the compound mixed team competition. Korea taking on India. Korea lining up with O Yu Hyun and Kim Jong Ho. India with Joji Saraka Venom and Ojas Diotale. There is the uh, American Rio Wild in the coaching box for the Korean team. So we've talked about Korea and the dominance they've shown in, in a recurve archery. Rio is making a massive difference to their compound setup. Yeah, we can only guess, of course, uh, how much of a difference he's made and how much they've already done uh, in their preseason. But um, while well, we're seeing two countries here that have invested in their uh, compound division uh, with foreign coaches, although Sergio Pagni isn't here right now, I think he uh, is the Indian compound coach now and uh, has proven his worth in uh, Antalya where uh, uh, Jyothi Sereka Venom managed to win the individual and mixed team gold. So in Antalya, we, th we saw this Indian team uh, almost shoot the world record. Uh, they were very close to it uh, in terms of uh, how many axes they shot. They just uh, didn't manage to clean the round. But uh, they did say that they were going to go for another attempt. And uh, this might be their second attempt. It's very early to talk about world records, but um, I'm mostly talking about them being in another gold medal match uh, with the mixed team, which is already in a very impressive feat. Just to put it in context, what what is the world record? From the top of my head, 159 with Nine. 13 X's, oh. is it? No, I don't. I, I don't know. I've tried to put too much information in my head over the past couple of days and some of it got lost. <laughs> Ten. So Kim Jong-ho is the uh, top qualifier this week, um, but he got knocked out uh, surprisingly in uh, I think the 16th or 8th, maybe even 32nd now that I think of it. Solid start from uh, the Koreans and the Indians here. Uh, certainly a bit of tension. It's a very high quality match. But JG Sareka Venom, uh, she talked after winning the individual in Antalya that she's kind of um, 
broken through, if you like. And she's been, she seems like she's been around for a, a long time for someone who's just 26 years old. That being her first win in Antalya. Yeah, I mean, uh, some people uh, take a bit longer than others. I mean, the, the Steve Weiler won his first World Cup that he ever attended, uh, and some need 20 tries. I mean, uh, and then. Um, what we sometimes forget is there is a whole bunch of people who go to many, many World Cups and never get a win. So there's there's that as well. So um, it, it, it's not a given that you will eventually win a World Cup stage. No, certainly not. But uh, Venom certainly promised over the years. And it just seems like it's taken her a bit longer than perhaps she wanted. But like you said, the investment in Indian archery over the last uh, couple of years has been significant. And uh, it, it does seem to be making a difference. Over on the other side of the shooting line, it's definitely a markup in performance. Rio Wild taking over the coaching for the compound division in Korea, trying to marry up with the high performances you see from the Korean recurve team. All square here, though. 39 apiece, Korea, to start. And number two. Ten. So earlier you asked me uh, if I thought Rio was uh, communicating in English or if he knew any Korean. Uh, but we can hear now that he is... Uh, coaching them in English so far so I don't know if they had to learn English or if they already knew uh, plenty of it to understand what he is saying or maybe they're acting like they know what he's saying and just uh, doing what they think <laughs> in any case it's working really well It's just the, the occasional nine that looks fine um, and they seem to be a little surprised by it but it's nothing super strange uh, so there might be uh, a little bit of wind uh, especially down at the, the back of the field um, but yeah their, their technique is just it's clean enough to not really notice anything wrong with the Shots that don't go into the ten, so it might just be that their sight is not in the middle. But it's an interesting point you're talking about with the difference in the wind from one end to the other. You see down on the shooting line, especially with this shot, there's not too much wind, just a little bit of headwind. But down at the uh, target end of the range, you can see the uh, feather flags oh, fluttering down. away. The answer holding on indeed to that edge. Team India staying in the chase, 78 to 78. Well, calling it India staying in the chase in the venue seems uh, a little ungenerous. They, they're matching each other, that's for sure, these two teams. But for me, if anything, the Koreans are the ones that are likely to drop a point or two extra. Yeah, maybe. Uh, th although uh, I think both of the teams are uh, are pretty solid right now. Um, just I s just still have a vivid memory of how dominating they were in Antalya, the the Indian team that is. So it's it's difficult to put that aside in my head and think like, oh, they might drop a couple points more more than this. Uh, yeah, it's a different field. It's a different uh, different tournament. But um, for me, they they go into this match. Uh, maybe as the favorite, uh, which is strange because Korea was the first ranked team. That's just the impression that they left after uh, the Antalya uh, yeah, World Cup stage. So about the first ranked team, they shot a 1-4-0-9 career in the uh, ranking round. 
India shot 1389 to put some context around it. Uh, ranked uh, sixth after a ranking round. Yeah, I think the ranking round was a bit windy. Um, so and wet and and wet, but that was mostly the recurve side. Um, so th I think that might have leveled the field a bit. Um, so the the scores in the qualification, especially or maybe for recurve and compound, are not representable for uh, the level of archery that they produce here. Damn. Felt a bit long. Yeah, but Rio seems to be happy with it. He's calling it a good arrow. Maybe purely going off of the uh, result, but Damn. to be to be truthful, that's what matters at this point, right? Um, well, you keep telling me that it's all about not just the score, but also the execution, the consistency of the execution that you're looking for as well. But I tend to agree with you. When it comes down to gold medal matches, what you want are those nice juicy yeah. double yeah. figures in each box. Obviously, I, I feel like the, the perfect shot doesn't exist. Um, you don't want to stray too far off it uh, because you're always chasing that perfection. Um, but in a situation like this, um, you just need to do whatever it takes to get that arrow in the middle. It would be very hypocrite of me if I say that all your shots need to look good uh, in a finals venue because mine definitely didn't. <laughs> they definitely don't look good if they end up in the six. Is that a dig in my, to my uh, bronze medal match in Rio? <laughs> not in the slightest. They were getting close to the countdown, and I think that comes down to uh, O's first shot, taking up a bit of time. He didn't seem too stressed about it, though, Kim Jong Ho. I think that might hit the line, but I'm also going to leave it up to the target judge to make it definitive. Come for a measure, that's for sure. It could be important if uh, this is a 10 by Joti. It's going to the 9. And actually, that makes it uh, well, even more critical here. Three. Provisionally a one-point lead for the Koreans after three of four ends. The chef, it's <laughs> that third arrow in that uh, end for India. Critical for a measure now. Yeah, and I think it hits the line, but because of the, the print on the arrow, it's difficult to see. It's a nice job by the cameraman trying to give us a better angle and then hiding it behind another arrow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we can blame the uh, camera person's height really on, on that one. It looks like it's been marked up, it's been measured up by the judge, and that means that we are still all square at 117 apiece. That measure critical for the Indians. And do we have any fans of the Republic of Korea? Let's make some noise for Oh Yu Hyun and Kim Jong Ho. Well, able to maintain a smile, Jyoti Sirka Venom. But this is an exceptionally tight one, as the bronze medal match was. That went to a shoot-off. It's a good chance of that happening here. Yeah, I wouldn't mind. What's better than a shoot-off for gold? So we're going to the fourth and final end of the compound mixed team gold medal match here in Shanghai, the second stage of the Hyundai Archery World Cup. Korea's O oh and Kim to shoot first, with the scores all square between Korea and India. Nine. 
at this point in the match, uh, the previous match, I should say, uh, both teams just put down the, the pedal to the metal and went with a uh, perfect score, but that's not really an option anymore now. Certainly not for Korea. Ten. Bit of a longer hold again, so I wonder how much time they have left. Uh, it shows 41 seconds left on the clock, so it should still be good. That's another one of those mid-end arrows that could make a massive difference here. No. It looked pretty good, but uh, she walked off the line seemingly knowing that that was going to hit left. So still all square, one arrow per archer left. Oh, tight. Not for a measure, that could become incredibly critical. For me, that looked that looked out, but it was also very close. So, don't pin me on it. And finishing off with a 155, 156 available with two tens for the Indian team. For the win, it's going to depend on that measure of the third arrow for Korea. So, Yotale doing his job. Tops it into the 10. So, 39 to finish with a 156. It's high fives all around. Perhaps an indication that the uh, Indian coach has already had a look down the scope and seen the score of uh, the Korean arrow. That uh, your f initial gut feeling was that Korean arrow is down. Yeah, but it, as you said, it was more of a gut feeling than anything else. Um, she was very quickly calling that, as if there was no reason to have any closer looks. Well, celebrations on the Indian side of the uh, target. They seem convinced that they've done this by a single point, 156 to 155. We're still waiting for the official confirmation. And there is confirmation that uh, India have taken this, the uh, third arrow for uh, the Korean team, marked as a nine, as it was provisionally on our score bug. And uh, that means that India have taken gold in the compound mixed team competition, 156 to 155. And Jyoti Sureka Venom and Oyas Yatale will be standing on top of the podium very shortly here in Shanghai.